parasitic losses. So I've been doing a, a series recently on fundamental flaws of uh, the piston engine and this is kind of not a single flaw, I'm just going to gather this all up into one. So parasitic losses, that's my best drawing from memory of what a flea looks like. Uh, you know, I generally considered a parasite. And what parasitic losses are, are failures in the design Generally we can never get around them because stuff like friction, heat loss through thermal conductivity of the aluminium that the, the, you know, the castings are made out of. These are things that you cannot get around, you know, there really isn't a way to design that out. You know, as long as you've got two surfaces either rotating, sliding against each other or forcing against each other, you're going to get compression losses through force, you're going to get heat losses through friction you're going to get, you know, there's going to be wear, there's stuff like that. So I'll quickly go over a few of them. Um, parasitic losses are friction, so starting from the top, the main friction that we, you know, we're quite familiar with is friction between the piston rings and the pistons between the cylinder. There's friction between the bearings of your big end and your small end, um, the bearings between the crankshaft. These are all parasitic losses. These are, energy is being sucked out of the system due to these um, forces that are acting uh, upon components inside your engine and like I say there's nothing really much you can do about it you can't really have a floating cylinder it would be absolutely fantastic if you could do that like it was a labyrinth seal kind of design or something like that would be absolutely fantastic but generally friction um, and the heat losses that are associated um, uh, inertial mass you know actually uh, adding energy to a system to actually get it to move inertial resistance, back torque from the rear wheel, uh, chain slack in your chain, uh, taking up that slack because that slack has to be there so your suspension doesn't basically break your chain. Things like this are all called parasitic losses. There are slight losses. Some of them can be designed out, so some things have been called parasitic losses. Some of them can't be removed but they can be reduced. Uh, DLCs, diamond-like coatings, um, stuff like that can reduce wear, can reduce friction mainly because there's friction first and then there's wear. Um, a lot of the times DLCs are used in cylinders and pistons and you know other components, gudgeon pins, this that and the other and they are used because they're there to reduce the friction, reduce the heat build up which means that actually there's less losses, it's not just about wear it's also if you can reduce the losses, if you can have less friction between um, the linear bearings in your cylinder, which as I mentioned before is a piston ring in the cylinder sleeve, then great, you're not losing that energy, you, you know, you're retaining a tiny bit of it. Generally it's about wear because the, the um, wear uh, risk outweighs the um, losses that you're losing through friction, you know, the stuff like that. Um, the actual cycle itself, a uh, four-stroke cycle especially in particular, you know, there are wasted, there's wasted energy with accelerant pistons, we've covered that. Um, but the heat that you actually piss out of your exhaust, that heat could be used um, to increase pressure just in another cylinder, and that's where this five and six-stroke cylinder cycles come from. Um, your turbo actually recovers some of the energy that's lost from your engine from the heat of the exhaust flow and you know basically adds more um, intake pressure, you know, your manifold pressure goes up because it's recovering lost energy that would normally just piss out your exhaust. So that's parasitic losses, it's really quick, that's just what it means if you hear what it said. And I'll see you in a bit.